Hello everybody. So today we're going to be creating a neural network that is capable of predicting what sort of article of clothing it is seeing using images that we found on Kaggle from MNIST. So what we had done in the previous part of the video is we had taken our train and test data and we had put it into the correct arrays and we had put it into the neural network the way that we wanted. If you haven't seen that video, please do watch it. In this video, we're going to actually build the neural network. So let's start. And as you've noticed, we've imported Keras above. So we're going to be using that to build the neural network. Uh, so let's start doing that. So let's call our neural network uh, CNN because it's going to be a convolutional neural network. This is just a variable name. And uh, Keras. And since we're going to make a sequential neural network, we have to call Keras.sequential and open up brackets like this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Now inside this, what we're going to do is we're going to add layers as we want. So the first layer which we're going to add is we're going to add a convolutional 2D layer. And I'll just explain what that is in a second. So to add a layer, it doesn't matter if you haven't done it before, it's very simple. It's keras dot layers dot and you type the layer so convolutional 2d uh, and there are just some parameters you need to fill so okay filters let's set it to 32 let's set the kernel size to be uh, 3 let's set the activation function to be value As discussed before, let's set the input shape to be equal to 28 by 28 by 1. Now, if you remember this, we had clearly specified that the shape should be this in the previous video. Again, if you haven't seen that, please watch it. Now, let me explain what convolutional uh, layer does. So, say you have a picture and it looks like this. So the picture as discussed before is just a matrix full of numbers and the numbers indicate the pixel brightness. So what we do in convolutional is we take a smaller grid and we pass it through the entire image like this. And using that, we multiply each value with the weight. And finally, when we're done, we get a smaller matrix. So essentially, if this is your original image, the convoluted image looks something like this. So we're making it smaller because we don't really need all this sort of details in the neural network. So that's the first step. Uh, now let's add a max pooling layer as well. And I'll just explain what that is in a bit. So layers dot max pooling 2D and let's set the pool size to be so now again max pooling what it does is so finally after convolution let's say you your matrix looks like this obviously it'll be much bigger but for example so what it does is suppose you've set the pooling size to 2 which we have it's going to create pools of 2 into 2 and it's going to look at just the brightest image of that pool and take just that one so here in this pool, you can see 429, 505, 792, 261. It takes just the 792, which means it's further reducing the quality of the image, making it easier for our computer to run it quicker. So after convolution, if the image looks like this, after max pooling, the image looks like this. So these are very important steps. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to flatten it. So keras dot layers dot flatten and this just puts it in the appropriate shape that the neural network wants it to be in like it doesn't want a 2d matrix rather just a 1d string of numbers it's very common to put this in there and um now we, we we're just gonna add some dense layers a dense layer is just the layer full of nodes that you might have seen when you're studying about neural networks that, that layer is called a dense layer. So let's add one of one or two of those. And in this one, let's say we want 32 nodes. 
and let's set the activation function to relu. And now finally we need to put an output layer as well. So let's make that also a dense layer. Dense. And uh, now for the output, there are 10 different outputs, right? So your output number of nodes should be 10. And typically in a categorical problem like this, where you're doing classification, a common activation function is softmax. So I'm just going to put softmax here. And yeah, so that should be, that should build. Oh, sequential made a typo there. And I made another typo. Yep, now it's running. Now the next step is to actually compile this. So let's let's call it. It's called CNN. So let's call it CNN and compile. Uh, and now we have to set what the loss should be. So we're going to set it to something called sparse categorical cross entropy. Okay. And I'll explain what that is in just a second. Sparse scatter. And I'm going to set the optimizer to Adam. This, this is very common steps. It's done in every neural network problem. And let's take the metrics to be accuracy. So we're checking for accuracy here. There are multiple other things you can check for like F1 score, etc. But here we're just checking for accuracy. And um, let me explain what sparse categorical cross entropy is. So since this is a classification problem, the the answer or the number like the label can go from zero to nine so there are two different things there's sparse categorical and simply categorical so what categorical does is it outputs like in a one hot one hot encoding form so for example suppose the um suppose you want to say that it's in the zeroth element so what that does is it will input a one and all zeros like that so on but what we want is we want just the label, right? We want it to show just a zero or if it's, or if the thing thinks it's number five, we want it to just output five. That's why we're using sparse categorical. If you're using categorical, it would have done zero, one, two, three, four, and the fifth index, it would have given a one. So anyway, uh, let's compile this. And now the last thing to do is to just fit it onto the, um, training data. So let's just do cnn.fit and we've compiled our training data and all that beforehand. So let's just fit it onto the training data and let's set a batch size. Now this is stuff you can tamper with on your own and see what's best for the problem at hand. Let's set it to uh, be let's say 30 epochs. Epochs is the number of times it will run. And since we actually have validation data, this is not necessary, but since we do, I'm just going to pass it in. And if you remember, we created an XVAL and a YVAL as well. So, yeah. And as you can see, it started running. Uh, this step will take some time. Uh, yeah, so now it's finished training. And as you can see, just on the training score, X train and Y train, we got about a 89% accuracy, which is pretty good. And the validation accuracy is also very similar, which is a very good sign. It means it's not overtraining. And now moment of truth, we're going to evaluate it on the test data. So let's do CNN.evaluate and let's pass in our X test and our Y test. And let's see. Okay, so we got a, a score of again, 0.89, which is very good. So yeah, there you go. That was building a neural network to identify different articles of clothing from their images. Thanks for watching.